Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the draw tight trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Mazda CX-9. Now this is what your hitch is going to look like when it's installed and it is a hidden cross tube which means that all of the hitch is pretty well hidden behind the rear fascia except for the actual receiver tube opening. So that's going to make it really nice to get a clean look but all the function of your hitch. Now being a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening means that you're gonna have a ton of different accessories to choose from, whether it be ball mounts, bike racks, or cargo carriers, as this is kind of the standard size that you'll see a lot of them come in. And all of them are gonna stay in place with a 5 8 pin and clip, which is not included with the hitch. A lot of your accessories will come with one, um, but it's gonna be required to keep that in place. Now, if you wanna pick up a locking version, we have plenty of options available here at eTrailer, which means that you can leave your accessories on the back of your vehicle, and once they're locked, no one's gonna be able to walk away with them. Now, if you plan on towing the trailer, you do have a rolled style safety chain loop, which is gonna make it nice and easy to get your safety cables on. So you can see a standard S hook goes on there nice and easy. Even a larger Cleva style is no problem to hook up here. And speaking of towing, another nice feature of the draw tight hitch is gonna be a welded on bracket that's right here. And you can pick up a extra bracket for your four pull or seven pull, but that's gonna give you a nice secure mounting point for your trailer wiring. It's a nice little addition that draw tight includes. Also going along with towing, there are gonna be some weight capacities of this hitch that you need to adhere to. And our gross trailer weight rating, which is gonna be the trailer plus the accessories loaded onto it is coming in at 4,500 pounds. And that's a pretty good rating. Your your tongue weight is going to be coming in at 675 pounds, which is going to be the downward pressure that's put on the inside of the receiver tube opening. Now this can be used with a weight distribution hitch, but the numbers are going to stay exactly the same. And before just hooking up and towing, you are going to want to make sure you check the vehicle's owner's manual to see what it's capable of towing and then compare that with the hitch and also any of the components that you're using to hook up to your trailer and take the lowest of those numbers so you stay safe. Now a few quick measurements from the center of our hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia. We're looking at about six inches and that's going to be important when choosing accessories, especially folding ones. And that way we know we have clearance in that stowed position to not make contact with our rear fascia. It's also important when choosing a ball mount to make sure you have one that sticks out far enough to be able to hook up without hitting your rear fascia as well. Now, we also need to get our ground clearance. So from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground, we're coming in right at about 13 inches, and that's gonna be important. You can measure the coupler of your trailer and compare that with the 13 inches to determine if you need a rise or a drop for your ball mount. Um, that's also important to keep in mind when you have suspended accessories on, like cargo carriers or bike racks. As you go up inclines, those are gonna wanna tilt towards the ground, um, and they can make contact on some severe angles. So just kinda keep that in mind when you have your accessories loaded up and your going up those hills. Now, as far as installation goes, this is a pretty easy one. You will have to remove a small panel underneath, which is pretty easy to do. And that's just gonna give you clearance for the hitch. And you will have to lower down your exhaust by popping it off the isolators, which is pretty easy to do. And that's just gonna allow us to get the hitch up in place and run our hardware down through the frame rail, bolt it up, and that's pretty much it. Now, I'm gonna walk you through every step of the installation to make sure you get your hitch installed. So let's take a look at that. We're gonna begin our installation on the lower portion of our fascia where there's a small panel that we'll need to remove. And this is not gonna be going back up because once the hitch is in place, uh, th there's not gonna be a clearance for this. To remove it, there's gonna be a series of plastic push pins that we're gonna go ahead and pop off. And to get these removed, you can use a flathead screwdriver. There's a little notch there. Just kind of uh, pry in there. And if you need to do a twisting motion, that should help get this popped out. So go ahead, there's four of these. You're gonna to wanna to take those out. Now another helpful tool is gonna to be a trim panel tool. Um, and these really come in handy for prying these out. But either method's gonna to work to get these removed. Now there is a clip here uh, that attaches it to a bracket that's up there. We're gonna be removing the bracket as well. So to get this to separate, there's a little tab here. You can kinda of just push in and we should be able to get this to pop off. Um, you can see the tab on this back side here. And once I get this pried off, I'll show you. So this is what it looks like. And you can reach up here with a flat head and just pry that off, or you can even use your fingers to gain access to that. Now the bracket that we've removed those plastic clips from, if you kind of go up, you'll see a 10 millimeter screw. We'll go ahead and get those removed. And as I move this, you'll see that there is a plastic push pin. Uh, it's gonna be the center one out of the three. So you can go ahead and get that removed and that's gonna allow our bracket to come off.
There's also a clip up top on our bracket. So we'll go ahead and get that popped off. And it's gonna be very similar to what we had on these ones here. So once you pull those off, you can set these aside. Next, we'll go ahead and remove our exhaust isolators. And this is gonna give us access to be able to pass our hitch up to get it uh, where we need to mount it up on the frame. And if you've never removed these before, a pry bar helps a lot here to get leverage. And also if they're a little sticky uh, or not really wanting to move, what you can do is spray a little bit of a, either silicone or a, even a soapy water solution, just to kind of help move this along. And that's gonna make it a lot easier, especially if they've been on there for a while. Sometimes these get caked up and it can be a little bit tricky to pry them off. Now there's also going to be two more isolators that uh, we need to remove and those are going to be kind of tucked on the back side of the muffler but we do need to support our exhaust because there's no isolators pretty much all the way down uh, to where our catalytic converter is so we don't want the exhaust just hanging uh, it might cause damage so i'm using a red or a, a cam buckle strap here because i'm on a lift but you can use a box or just a block of wood make sure it's just not free hanging down um, so we'll go ahead and get these two popped off as well Now we're ready to get our hardware put in the frame and we're gonna grab our fish wire and take the coil then and we're gonna start at this access hole that's towards the front of the vehicle and feed the coil then towards the back. And there's gonna be a large access hole so you can put your finger in there and feel for that coiled end and pull it through. Now leave a little bit of a tail here. In fact, I bent mine just to kind of keep that from pulling through. And we'll take our spacer block. You can feed that over the coiled portion and place that in the frame rail. We'll then take our carriage bolt and we'll thread this onto the coiled end. And now we'll just pass this through. You may have to kind of jostle it around and then we'll get this to drop in place. Now our front one is gonna be a reverse fish wire technique, which is pretty simple. We'll just take our coiled end, place our spacer block over it and hold that. We can then coil on our carriage bolt. And then we'll just feed both of these into the frame. And then pull this through. Again, you may have to jostle it around, but we want this popping through. Now keep your fish wires on. This is gonna help keep our hardware in place as we raise our hitch up. Uh, last thing we wanna do is have this go back in the frame rail and we'll have to fish that back out. So leaving this on is gonna help prevent that. Now we can go ahead and repeat on the other side. Now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna go ahead and get our hitch raised up in position. Now I recommend having your conical tooth washer and nut ready on each side. We're gonna get this hand threaded on to hold the hitch in position. Now the teeth on the conical tooth washer will face against the hitch. So just make sure you have it in the proper orientation. So as we raise this up over the muffler, you can just feed those uh, fish wires through and that's where that bend kind of comes into play kind of holds it in And just raise this up to where you have your studs popping through And then at this point we'll just take off our fish wire And then we'll place our conical tooth washer in place and you can use the washer to kind of create a little bit of pressure against the stud. And that way it's gonna kind of hold in place, allowing us to thread on the nut without it pushing back in the frame rail. So just get a few threads started on each side of the vehicle. And that way it's gonna hold this hitch up. With our hitch supported, we'll just go ahead and get the rest of our conical tooth washers and nuts in place. Just hand tighten for now. Now with all of our hardware in place with a 7 8 socket, I'm gonna go ahead and just snug this down we're gonna come back with a torque wrench here shortly, so you don't have to get crazy. We just wanna draw the hitch up. Now we'll come back with our torque wrench and that same 7 8 socket. And the torque settings are gonna be found in the instruction manual. Uh, we're gonna go through and get these all torqued down. 
Uh, this is going to make sure that it's going to be tight enough for the lifespan of the hitch to make sure that obviously it doesn't come loose, but also it's not going to be too tight putting stress on the threads. So go through and torque these all down. If you need a torque wrench, we have these available here at eTrailer. You can generally rent them at an auto parts store for free, but this is going to be an important step. With all of our hardware tightened and torqued, we'll go ahead and get our isolators put back on our exhaust. And we can also remove whatever we use to support that exhaust. The exhaust up, we are officially done with the installation of our hitch. All that's left to do is load up your accessory and hit the road. And that was a look at installation of the Draw Tight Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2022 Mazda CX-9.